Hey guys, Ryan Wall for Life here today and I'm back with another video. Now today's video I'm going to be uh, reviewing episode 4 of She-Hulk. Now before I get into this, I do want to give you guys a big thank you for you know all the views that I got from my last video, uh, the How Strong is Saitama video. I dropped that out before I went on vacation and as I was on vacation, I was just keep on checking it and I was seeing it climb up and up and up and I was keep on uh, telling myself about it. I was like, there's no way I'm going to hit this much, there's no way I'm going to hit this much and Every time I said it, I was keep on hitting it and hitting it. I was getting over hundreds of views. And I think within like four, maybe five days, I was able to hit over a thousand views, which was a big thank you to you guys because you guys came in and, you know, you view the crap out of it. Some of you guys even, you know, left some likes and, you know, commented on the video, which means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. I did put quite a bit of uh, time and effort in that video. And I'm happy that this is my first, you know, video that hit a thousand views. I have two channels. My second channel, I have quite a bit of views on there too, but I've never hit as many as that video. That video is my highest viewed video of all time, and it was my fastest growing video. And then on top of it, it is my first video to hit a thousand and above. So yeah, once again, big thank you to all of you guys for viewing that video. I hope you guys enjoy all my content. But yeah, let's get into this episode. This episode of She-Hulk. It has quite a bit of controversy around it due to the fact of the whole Megan Thee Stallion and She-Hulk twerking scene, which was towards the end of the episode. Uh, when I saw that, I thought it was going to be a main thing about this story, but, you know, her trying to do a defense case for Megan Thee Stallion and doing some cringy stuff. But that was only towards the end, though, I'll be honest, it was quite cringy and I will get onto that. But let's talk about this uh, episode as a whole. Now, the episode starts off with, you know, uh, uh, Jen's, uh, Jennifer's uh, friend, she's looking through, you know, she's looking on her tablet and she's looking through all these social media stuff and these like news reports talking about She-Hulk saying that she might be, uh, you know, too dangerous or whatever, or talking about the case and stuff. And then you have uh, two guys talking, one guy was like, oh, I, he was like saying some sexist thing about her, you know, he's like, oh, I didn't expect her to be a hero or some of that or like being a lawyer. I forgot. I watched it like yesterday and I forgot it already. But yeah, he was like talking about her. You know, he was like, he was kind of discrediting her saying, oh, women can't do this and that, which is stereotypical of these, you know, highly feminist and woke, uh, you know, shows and projects. They always have to throw in these type of, you know, topics to complain about. And then you have a kid saying, oh, damn, I would smash or whatever. Like, he was like, I'll hit that. Some stupid crap like that. But yeah, we have, the, they already start off the episode with having a guy, you know, belittling her and, you know, diminishing her accomplishments and trying to say, oh, women can't do this and that. And then we had somebody sexualizing her. Uh, you, it seemed like a kid, but sexualizing her. And this is a main staple and trope of feminist narrative uh, driven like shows where they have most of the guys being assholes, either through being overly sexually, you know, um, contacting, uh, contacted with them or being, you know, just an asshole and, uh, you know, demeaning towards them, which it does happen in real life. I will admit that. But once again, it is kind of ridiculous to make it seem like this is something that very common and always happens. And to this extent, they're literally online making videos saying this shit. I, I don't like that. I, I hate when they do that. It's just like, oh, victim, like it's victimhood mentality. And on top of it, it's just trying to make all the men look bad. So, yeah. But after that, we just have her going to the court, uh, you know, going to see um, Blonsky and telling him, you literally left. This is ruining my case. You're going to screw me over by doing this. And he's like, hey, look, I didn't do this. This guy named Wong came there, took me out, put me into this fighting thing, and I had a fight. I didn't have, this was not uh, of any of my volition. She's like, okay, we'll check it out. She got a friend to, you know, send him a book, thirst trap, whatever the hell that means, to get Wong there. They get Wong she talks to him, he's like, yeah, I did all of that. Yeah, sorry for doing that. I had to do it for this training thing. And this was obviously from the movie Shang-Chi. So the instances that happen in the show are happening right around the same time as Shang-Chi. And also around the time of, uh, you know, what's the thing called? Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, I think it was called. Yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home, which I did check out the movie. I absolutely loved it. But yeah, around that time, because... Wong also mentions uh, a spell to wipe out people's memories, which Doctor Strange did, and he mentions the problems that they had from doing so. So this is around Shang Chi's time, which I guess is you know after what happened in you know Spider Man No Way Home, and Doctor Strange, uh, you know Multiverse of Madness comes out after that. So it's supposed to be around those time. Right now the timeline is a little uh, you know 
wonky because there's multiple different timelines not timelines, but multiple different events happening around the same time uh, as this is happening because they're set up for their multiverse uh, situation, which can be a little bit too much for people because then it's like, well, you have to watch the movies and stuff. And as as of lately, let's be honest, the fans of, you know, even bigger fans of Marvel are not really watching their movies like how they used to. So, yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But, yeah, they have him explain that and uh, doing that. They're trying to fix it. Then we have... Her other colleague from her last law firm, the you know the guy that was belittling her, he shows up. He has to have a case. They he comes to the superhero uh, division to get uh, you know his case solved. It was basically something with a girlfriend where he spent mo like ton of money on her, and she was basically using him and manipulated him. And uh, this is where the main one of the main stories. Because I think this episode compared to the other ones has two main stories. Her, uh, you know, defense of Blonsky and trying to get him pardoned, and um, you know, uh, one of the other guys. I forgot what the guy's name was. Uh, the other superhero dude. He's trying to get. Uh, he's trying to get. Uh, you know, the lawyer dude off. Uh, you know, help out with his case against his uh, girlfriend that basically scammed him, and she's not going to do it so he does it and what happens in this story or the b plot is he basically um he was dating an imp or i think they said an imp or a fairy from you know asgard she was basically has the ability to shapeshift and she shapeshifted into megan the stallion and he thought he was getting with megan the stallion and they were basically roasting him saying you really think you can get with her and stuff so they were making references to her quite a bit and his side is basically having the other guy trying to, you know, prove, uh, you know, that uh, she scammed him and she manipulated him and he didn't know better. And the defense they're using against him is, well, he should have known that he couldn't get Megan the Stallion. He was just being, you know, delusional uh, to believe that. And they were doing that. So that story didn't really matter much. It was just a bunch of, oh, she's transforming into different people, messing with people. She even transforms into the other guy and, you know, talks to Jen to get her, like, to help out and stuff. Oh, no, he talks to Jen to help out and stuff to for their case. So that's where they get the connection for that. Her, she gets uh, Blonsky pardoned by, you know, getting Wong there to, you know, prove it. Getting some of the people that work there to showcase that he changed. He also transforms to try to change it and stuff. Uh, I forgot, I don't think they fully get the problem fixed, but they just do that stuff to get it done. They, uh, they get the whole court stuff. It was a bunch of just like court scenes. And then we get to the ending part where we get to Megan Thee Stallion talking to her and saying, oh, this and that. And they start listening to her song. I think it was the song with Body Yadi, whatever the fuck it was called. So they start dancing. You see Megan Thee Stallion doing her twerk that she normally does. And then you see Jennifer Walters also twerking in her Hulk form. So we just see her twerking and they pan the camera on her ass and stuff as her twerking and shit. And then it gets even more cringier when she's like, she's like, I'll do anything uh, to defend you. You know, she's like, uh, Megan Thee Stallion said, you're the coolest lawyer I de uh, dealt with. And she's like, I'll do anything for you. I'll even kill for you. And she's like, calm down. And I was just like, oh my God. The moment they showed her in the court scene, I was like, oh, this is what they're talking about. It wasn't the m main thing about the story. It wasn't her twerking and stuff like that. It was just an ending thing. But still, it's cringy as hell. This is a Marvel show and we're having She-Hulk twerking with Megan Thee Stallion. The fuck? The fuck is this? Like, what? What the fuck am I watching? When I saw that, I'm like, what the hell is this? You literally... And people were making jokes saying they literally got an animator to animate a giant CG, CGI, uh, green monster twerking. Like, the fuck? I mean, the CGI is already bad enough. Her walking into the courtroom is already laughably bad. Even Blonsky's one. They changed him completely from the, you know, the Incredible Hulk movie. They had more of his face on, you know, Abomination. They're trying to make him look like how he did in the comics where he's like more like a fish creature like a man thing type of thing but he looked also terrible the cgi is horrible but it's like what do you expect this is a tv show doing cgi like that is already hard enough to do it on you know for a movie let alone a tv show with a limited uh you know tv budget but you don't have to make it worse by doing stupid things like that like i can see why people don't like the show personally uh i don't hate the show also sorry i said episode four this is episode three not episode four, episode three, but uh, yeah, 
it's it's just it's just embarrassing. How do you watch this? You see like the boys, and you see like you know Moon Knight, and you see you know the and the you know the Marvel uh, the Netflix uh, you know Marvel shows, and all the hard work and ted- dedication they put into it, and the seriousness. They do have comedy in it, but they have seriousness in it, and what they did with the shows and how mature it is. And then you see this, and it's like, what is that? Who the fuck is this show for? Teenage girls? Like, is this like for like fucking like idiots? It's so cringy. Her dance to that shit, that is so embarrassing. First, we have the first episode with the whole, you know, I, re- I hold my anger infinitely better than you, Bruce shit, which was complete bullshit. Then we have the second episode, which I didn't hate too much, but it was just really not much happening. It was kind of boring. And then this third episode, it was a bunch of court scenes, which was absolutely boring. It wasn't completely boring, but it was still pretty boring. And then we had the whole Megan Stallion stuff towards the ending, which was 100% cringe. Also, we do have uh, an interesting, a little bit story developing, at least towards the end of this episode, where these guys come in with construction stuff. One guy has a helmet, the other guy has a crowbar, the other guy has like a ball and chain or something like that. And he's attack- they're all attacking her. And we find out these are Asgardian tools. These are apparently Asgardian uh, construction worker tools, which is kind of stupid that Asgard and construction worker tools are these, you know, they can be used for like villainy or whatever. It's just dumb. But they used it against her. She beats them up. She's like, hey, I'm Shu Hulk. You guys can't really hurt me. They couldn't hurt her. They're trying to take her DNA for something. They said for a specific person. So there's somebody in the shadows that wants to take her DNA and use it and stuff. I'm, I have a guess. I will be bringing that guess a little bit later on, but I do want to talk about that. You do see these guys in the comic books. You've seen them in the other shows. I specifically remember them from uh, uh, Avengers uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the show, where they had the guy with the big ball and chain stuff, they had the guy with the crowbar, and they had the guy with like the super strength and stuff. In this one, they had like power gauntlets. This one, they made them different. It's just regular dudes, they just stole Asgardian tech, and that's why that they're able to do this. In the, uh, in, the, in the comics and in the uh, uh, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, it was they. They were superpowered beings. I think they were uh, either they're mutants or in humans or something like that. They were superpowered beings that uh, or metahumans or whatever. They had that ability and they were doing that. This one they just took that stuff. So we do have an interesting story at least developing with who is trying to take her DNA. I'm gonna assume that it's the leader. They did hint at it in the Incredible Hulk movie. When you know the Mr. Blue was helping out, uh, you know Bruce, and it fell into his head. But they didn't really do anything with that for a while. But then the fact that they brought Emil Blonsky back, it does leave me the impression that they're gonna be also touching back on that story. And the fact that he's trying to take her DNA because he did take Bruce's one in the movie, it makes sense. So yeah, that was pretty much the episode. It was it was pretty much just you know court scene stuff, which was kind of boring to me. And then a cringy ending with the whole dancing thing. The only thing I really liked about this episode was her breaking the fourth wall. I don't think it's necessary, but I do like it. It kind of reminds me of Malcolm in the Middle, how, you know, Malcolm would always talk to the audience and say, hey, this and that, and, you know. I do think that's funny, and it is present in the comic books. It, is it necessary for the show? Not really. But does it add a little bit of a flair? Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, I don't mind that. I think that's kind of interesting, especially when she said, don't think this is a cam- we're going to have cameos every week. And she's like, well, actually, we had Bruce. We had Wong, and uh, I forgot who else she said that they had, and they're obviously going to get Daredevil soon, so yeah, they are going to have quite a bit, but I like that. I also like that they're developing something later on, and hopefully if it is the leader, I'll be very proud, because the Hulk needs some fucking villains, you know? He needs some goddamn villains, because yes, he might be fighting at She-Hulk right now, but definitely Bruce is going to come back and they're both going to have to team up against him, and he's technically a Hulk villain, so yeah, that's going to be pretty dope. Um, yeah, that's it for this episode. It was pretty mundane. I uh, Hopefully the next episode is better, but I don't really think so. So yeah, that's just my opinions on this episode. I want to know what you guys think about the show. Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? Do you think some of us fans are just overreacting? Because I do see people saying this is the worst show ever. It's not the worst show ever. Is it a shit show? Yeah, but it's not the worst show. So yeah, I wonder what you guys think, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this vid- uh, video.